Salam Kogablis here. Hello and good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brendan LePaul and you're watching News at 10. Our headlines for tonight. Fourth phase of BKM to be credited to recipients starting next Tuesday. And private employers prohibited from cutting pay of workers who go to vote. The fourth phase of Bantuan Keluarga Malaysia BKM financial aid will be credited into the recipient's bank account starting next Tuesday. The distribution of the BKM, which was originally scheduled for December, is made earlier in preparation of the upcoming monsoon season. Engagement dengan... Explaining further, Prime Minister Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said the payment is expected to be completed by 18 November. Kita percepatkan kepada bulan November kerana bagi persediaan untuk menghadapi monsun timur laut yang dijangka bermula pada pertengahan bulan November. Jadi kita bagi awal ni sebab kita takut banjir berlaku. Jadi yang pertamanya untuk kegunaan sewaktu banjir. Dan yang kedua Jika walaupun dikreditkan dalam akaun masing-masing, kalau banjir tak boleh keluar ke bandar, jadi mereka tak boleh nak menggunakan wang tersebut. The fourth phase of BKM payment will involve allocation of 2.1 billion ringgit, which will be credited into 5.2 million recipients starting 18th November. Under this fourth phase, each recipient is expected to receive up to 900 ringgit in cash aid according to their eligibility categories. Barisan Nasional BN is confident that it can win more than 112 parliamentary seats in the 15 general election, G15, to form the new federal government. However, Prime Minister Datu Sri Isma Sabi Yaakob said even though BN will be able to form a government with that 112 seats, he still believed that BN would not be doing so on its own, but rather with friends of BN from Sabah and Sarawak to ensure that it will be a more stable government. Seperti yang saya sebut dalam ucapan tadi, setakat yang ditaklimatkan tadi, kita boleh melepasi 112 ya, untuk membentuk kajian sendiri. Walau mana pun saya percaya uh, kita juga tidak akan bersendirian dalam membentuk kajian. Kita perlukan kajian yang lebih kuat. Rakan-rakan kita di Sabah, di Sarawak pasti akan bersama kita. The Premier said this after attending a meet and greet program at Kampung Batu Bor in Borough today. In the G15, Datu Sri Isma Sabri is defending the Borough parliamentary siege which he held since 2004. He's being challenged by Abbas Awang, PH, and Asmawi Harun, PM, Basati. Private employers are not allowed to impose any penalty or make any deduction from employees' salary for being absent from work to go to the polls. Human Resource Minister Dr. Sri M. Saravanan said in a statement today that the employers were bound by subsection 25, subsection 1 of the Election Offences Act 1954 to do so. Dr. Sri M. Saravanan said employers should discuss with employees regarding the option of giving time off or leave to allow them to exercise their rights. He said employers could give reasonable time off for workers whose polling stations were located nearby their workplace. They can also give a day off for workers who have to vote in areas located far away from their workplace. For employees who need more than one day to travel to the polling station, they can take annual leave. He added that employers could be fined up to 5,000 ringgit or sentenced to a jail term of up to one year if they refuse to allow their employees to exercise their rights. 
Members of the Malaysian Armed Forces ATM are allowed to attend charama or political campaigns held for the G15, but not in their uniform. Royal Malaysian Air Force RMAF Commander General Tan Sri Mohammad Asghar Khan Goriman Khan said ATM members and personnel were never prevented from exercising their rights to choose a government to determine the future of the country. Interesting to uh, activity politics. Uh, they are allowed boleh menghadiri ceramah-ceramah tetapi tidak di dalam pakaian tentera. Tidak boleh terlibat mengambil sepanduk-sepanduk atau banners and all those things untuk uh, aktiviti politik. Lah. So, itu sudah termaktub. Dan saya rasa uh, perkara ini telah diberitahu kepada mereka. Earlier, Tan Sri Mohamad Asghar Khan presented the Pingat Jasa Malaysia PJM to 522 ATM veterans at the Aerospace Hall of the Air Force College in Alustar, Kedah. He added that more than 80,000 army veterans who are eligible to receive the PJM have yet to receive the medal to enable them to receive the assistance and benefits provided by the Department of Veterans Affairs. The police will not compromise with any form of misconduct during the 15th general election. Inspector General of Police Tan Sri Akril Sani Abdullah Sani said 2,500 teams of Opchantas Has have been mobilized to gather intelligence, monitor the situation and take necessary action against any party out to create trouble during the campaigning period. Uh, tidak menimbulkan uh, provokasi kepada mana-mana pihak yang 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 sama-sama berada dalam uh, urusan kempen pada hari ini. Contohnya seperti merosakkan, membuat kianat kepada poster-poster pilihan raya, banner dan seumpamanya. Di masa yang sama juga, mengganggu gugat uh, ke perjalanan ceramah-ceramah yang dijalankan oleh uh, uh, mana-mana pihak. Ini juga akan menimbulkan kegusaran dan juga pergeseran di kalangan uh, mereka yang, yang uh, berada di tempat yang semasa berkempen tersebut. On police preparedness ahead of early voting on 15 November, Tan Sri Akril Sani said the police have made thorough preparation to ensure the process is run smoothly. Undi awal pada 15 November ini uh, biasanya tidak menimbulkan banyak masalah kerana kesemua tempat-tempat uh, mengundi tersebut di jalan diadakan di premis-premis uh, uh, ATM untuk angkatan tentera dan di uh, PDRM eh, di Polis Raja Malaysia untuk anggota polis. Jadi seperti mana yang lepas-lepas uh, pada umumnya uh, perjalanan undi awal berlangsung dengan uh, lancar dan tanpa sebarang masalah. A total of 616 polling centres will be open for the early voting involving 118,794 PDRM personnel and spouses, as well as 146,737 ATM personnel and their spouses. Rapid bus will add another 40 free shuttle buses to carry affected passengers following the closure of 16 light rail transit LRT train stations between Klana Jaya and Ampang Park starting yesterday. Transport Minister Datu Sri Vika Siong in a post on his Facebook page today announced the additional buses was through the collaboration of Smart Slango and Mara Liner, with each providing 20 buses under their management. He said currently, Rapid Bus provides a total of 83 buses to accommodate the high number of passengers. More than 120 buses are mobilized to accommodate passengers on five routes as posted on Rapid KL's social media. Previously, LRT operator Rapid Rail Sindiran Berhad announced the unstable automatic train control ATC system was identified as the cause of the interruption in the Klanujaya Line LRT train service last Saturday and Monday. Prasarana said LRT services between Kelana Jaya and Ampang Park stations will be suspended for seven days starting at 6 a.m. yesterday after taking into account passenger safety and the time it will take to identify the cause of the service disruption. Coming up next, RTM signs broadcast sponsorship agreement for Qatar World Cup 2022.
And to complement the soccer of football season, RTM today signed a broadcast sponsorship agreement for the Qatar World Cup 2022 with MyTV Broadcasting, Sindiran Berhad, MyTV. Broadcasting Director General Dato Che Roslan Che Daud said, under the agreement, MyTV will contribute 3 million ringgit in support of the government's efforts to broadcast World Cup action in high definition HD for free to the people. He said the amount was in addition to the 32.5 million ringgit approved by the government through the finance ministry. Uh, kalau ada lagi masih ada lagi penaja-penaja yang ingin uh, menaja siaran kita ini, kita masih buka lagi dan apa ni? Kalau ikut rating kita TV 2 dan TV OK sangat sangat baik dari segi rating. He was met after the signing ceremony at Angka Sapuri today. The agreement was signed by Dato Che Roslan, representing RTM, and Mohamed Helmi Harith, my TV's chief executive officer. RTM will broadcast 41 matches, namely 27 live broadcasts and 14 delayed broadcasts through TV2, TV OK, and Sukan RTM channel for Qatar 2022 from 20 November to 18 December, which involve selected teams such as Germany, Brazil, Argentina, France and England. Local fashion designers need to be more creative and proactive in utilising digital technology in building brands and highlighting their products. Ministry of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs, KBD and HEP, Deputy Secretary General, Datin Rosanina Wahab said, local fashion designers should not only rely on the government and other organisations in expanding their market to be better known and accepted in the local and international markets. She said in line with the current development in technology and digital world, entrepreneurs need to make the best use of the opportunity and space available in highlighting their respective products and brands. She was speaking at the 2022 My Gaia Month campaign closing ceremony in Kuala Lumpur. My Gaia Month, which started on 6 October, managed to collect sales revenue of 500,000 ringgit. The campaign aims to promote and support local fashion products in conjunction with the Ministry by Malaysian Goods campaign, which also witnessed seven outstanding local designers presented with awards. Malaysia's fashion industry is expected to generate revenue of around 13.72 billion ringgit this year. The sales of clone vehicles in Malaysia is believed to be orchestrated by well-organized syndicates. Road Transport Department JBJ Senior Director Enforcement Dato Lokman Jaman said, based on the investigation, the syndicates are believed to be smuggling vehicles from Singapore using cars with Certificate of Entitlement, COE, about to expire, hiding them in the country before being sold cheaper than the market price via various social media platforms. Dato Lokman said among the most offered models are BMW, Lexus, Mercedes, Honda and Toyota and the syndicates target individuals aged 25 to 40. He added most of the victims were deceived by the offer of a cheap price and they were also promised to be given road tax and car ownership documents. Dato Lokman said JPJ was still active in tracking the network of syndicates selling cloned vehicles using its road charge vehicle entry permit, our CVEP system at the country's entry point in Joho to track foreign vehicles brought here. Uh, saya ingin memberitahu kepada peminat-peminat uh, kendaraan-kendaraan mewah supaya mereka jangan terjebak dengan pembelian kereta-kereta klon yang dibawa masuk secara haram. Mereka melakukan kesalahan. Ya. Dia bahasa Asia uh, 71 Akta 333 iaitu mereka kemungkinan akan uh, dikenakan tindakan uh, uh, tidak kurang pada RM2,000 kerana menggunakan kenderaan yang tidak didaftarkan di bawah Seksyen 1083 iaitu mereka uh, akan didenda lebih kurang RM5,000 dan tidak melebihi RM20,000 dan penjara ya boleh uh, dikenakan tidak kurang dari satu tahun tidak kurang dari atau tidak uh, lebih daripada lima tahun iaitu kesalahan mempamerkan nombor pendaftaran yang bukan kepunyaan kenderaan tersebut.
In Selangor, about 329 cases of cloned vehicles were recorded since 2011 via the department's special operations. JPJ also implemented the disposal of cloned vehicles with 234 vehicles in 2019 and 46 vehicles in 2022 being auctioned this year. Police have seized contraband cigarettes worth about 11.5 million ringgit in a series of raids at several locations in Negri Sembilan. The operation was conducted by the Bukit Aman Special Investigation and Intelligence Unit in Nilai, Rahang and Senawang last Saturday. Negeri Sembilan Police Chief Deputy Superintendent Ahmad Zafir Yusof said almost 600 boxes of contraband cigarettes of various brands were seized during the operation. Seizures were made on the lorries carrying the goods at the three locations, including one which was detained at kilometre 227 of the North-South Expressway. The case is investigated under Section 135, Subsection 1, Subsection D of the Customs Act 1967. And in Lakin, Johor Bahru, three men were arrested early today in connection with a vehicle ramming incident in Taman Mount Austin yesterday. Johor Police Chief Dato Kamarul Zaman Mamat in a statement said the individuals in their 30s were detained at 1.30 a.m. by a team from the Johor Bahru Slatan District Police headquarters. It was reported yesterday that a car driven by a party worker on election campaign material duty was rammed by another car several times around in the housing area early yesterday. It said one of those detained has previous records, adding that the three have been remanded for two days for investigations under Section 427 of the Penal Code for causing mischief and Section 279 for reckless driving. Those with information on the incident are urged to contact Case Investigating Officer Inspector Azri Jamalin at the number shown on your screen. Foreign front, Hurricane Nicole barrels into Atlantic shoreline. Stay with us. Hurricane Nicole barreled into Florida's Atlantic shoreline today with a brew of heavy downpours, fierce winds and a treacherous surge of ocean surf that threatened coastal areas still reeling from the last major storm six weeks ago. Nicole was upgraded from a tropical storm to a Category 1 hurricane as it thrashed the Bahamas yesterday. It was packing sustained winds of up to 120 kilometers per hour as it made landfall along the east coast of Florida, north of Miami. A hurricane warning was posted for a coastal stretch that included the Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral, where NASA's big new moon rocket stood exposed to the elements and anchored to its launch pad to ride out the storm. The Hurricane Center also issued storm surge advisories for much of Florida's Atlantic coast, warning that wind-driven waves would wash over beaches and rush inland to flood low-lying areas well beyond the shore. Nicole is expected to pass less punch at landfall than Hurricane Ian, which struck Florida as a major Category 4 storm. Authorities warn, however, that Nicole still posed a formidable threat, especially to structures and coastal foundations weakened by Ian. A faulty automatic engine throttle system that was not properly monitored by pilots led to the deadly January 2021 crash of a Sri Vijaya 737-500 jet. According to a final report by Indonesia's air accident investigator today, the crash into the Java Sea, which killed all 62 people on board, was Indonesia's third major commercial plane crash in just over six years and shone a spotlight on the country's poor air safety record. Indonesia's National Transportation Safety Committee, KNKT, said investigators had found it difficult to analyse the situation in the cockpit of the 26-year-old jet because the captain's voice was not recorded. 
KNKT said there had been no regulations and guidelines on upset prevention and recovery training by airlines that ensured a pilot's ability to help prevent unusual situations from occurring and recover from them in a timely manner if they did occur. KNKT said Sri Vijaya has since carried out such training for its pilots. Over 50 conscripts in Russian annex Crimea prepared to report for duty in the Russian army yesterday. Dressed in uniforms bearing the Russian coat of arms, the men gathered at a local railway station in Sevastopol for a final inspection before they departed for the garrisons in Russia's mainland. Family members watch on as an Orthodox priest blessed the conscripted men and conducted a special religious service for them. The Ukrainian peninsula of Crimea was seized by Moscow in 2014 and it's now considered part of Russia. The men were called up for statutory military service as part of a routine autumn conscription campaign which began in Russia on the 1st of November. The Defence Ministry has said the autumn conscription was not in any way related to the special operation, Russia's official term for its military campaign in Ukraine. All men in Russia are required to do a year's military service between the ages of 18 and 27 or equivalent training while in higher education. <laughs> Portugal and Uruguay enter World Cup with Mission for Redemption. That and more next in sports. One of Portugal's best generations of players, led by Cristiano Ronaldo with the twilight of his career, will arrive at the World Cup with the pressure of proving they are not underachievers. The Portuguese football landscape has been drastically transformed over the past two decades as the country evolved from a mid-level team into one of the world's best, with the country being viewed as a talent machine. Bruno Fernandes, Rafael Leao, Joao Felix, Joao Cancelo, Ruben Neves, Bernardo Silva, Vitinha and others will make Portugal, on paper, one of the best teams, a man for man, in Qatar. But the reality is different from the theory with Portugal. The rise of forward Cristiano Ronaldo and manager Jose Mourinho had a major impact on the country's football culture, leading them to the Euro 2004 final and Euro 2016 triumph. However, the impact is fading fast and winning the nation's league title at home in 2019 has not eased the criticism with recent outings disappointing. <laughs> they lost in the last 16 at Euro 2020, failed to qualify for the finals at the last two nation's league editions and had to go through the playoffs to reach this year's World Cup. The latest crop are part of the elite but have not been able to shine in the national team due to the insistence on moulding and adapting their game to accommodate Ronaldo. And twice world champions Uruguay were once a dominant force in world football. While their star does not shine as brightly as it once did, they can still make plenty of noise in Qatar with their blend of hardened veterans and exuberant youngsters. La Celeste may still rely on aging stalwarts Luis Suarez, Edinson Cavani and Diego Godin. But they have emerging talents in Darwin Nunez, Federico Valverde and Rodrigo Bentancur. Diego Alonso, however, is still looking for the right balance between the veterans and youngsters. Captain and centre-back Godin played the most minutes in Uruguay's qualifying campaign, but is in the twilight of his career at 38 and missed September's friendlies against Iran and Canada due to injury. The suarez Cavani duo, veterans of three World Cups with 126 international goals between them, has long been a hallmark of Uruguay's attack, but Alonso seems to have concluded that he cannot continue to pair the two 35-year-olds together. Nunez also looks better suited to playing in Uruguay's stride and trusted for for two alongside either Cavani or Suarez. But three in midfield allows Uruguay to play to their strengths, with Matias Vecino anchoring Valverde and Bentancur. If Alonso can solve the selection dilemmas that flummoxed his predecessor, Uruguay could be well placed to advance to the knockouts with another deep run, a possibility 
in Qatar. In the Bundesliga, Luli Augsburg twice came from behind to hold title chasing Union Berlin to a two-all draw yesterday. Geraldo Becker and Kevin Behrens netted for the home side who will be disappointed to have twice given up a lead. The teams went to the break at two-all and although there were fewer chances in the second period, Union will feel aggrieved. They did not get all the three points. Union climbed to the... And on to tennis, the ATP next gen. Dominic Stricker booked his spot in the semi-finals yesterday following a thrilling five-set win over local favourite and second seed Lorenzo Musetti in Milan. The Swiss seventh seed who saw off Jack Draper in three tie-breaks sets in his opening red group match prevailed 4-3, 4-3, 3-4, 3-4, 4-3. In the encounter, which lasted two hours and 28 minutes, having become the first player in the tournament's history to win three successive tiebreaks in Tuesday's win against Raper, Stricker advances with a match to spare. The 20 year old Stricker, who has hit 28 during his win, has yet to play a set that has not gone to a tiebreak in the tournament. Earlier, third seed Draper of Britain downed Taiwan's winless Chun Sin Seng. 1-4, 4-2, 4-3, 4-2. To beg his first win of the tournament. The third seed rose from a set down to dominate the next three sets to wrap up the encounter. At 41st and 23rd respectively, Draper and Mozzetti are the two highest ranked players at the tournament. Wrapping up the news at 10, in our top story, Ford Face of BKM to be credited to recipient starting next Tuesday. Don't forget to tune in to updates at noon tomorrow at 12.30pm. And one last thing before we go, Justin, history was made in national hockey as Malaysia lifts Sultan Aslan Shah Cup for the first time with a 3-2 win over South Korea in the final. Congratulations to the team. Till then, it's lights out. Yang Sahih DRTM, hashtag MyPRU15. I'm Brenda Paul. Take care and have a fantastic day.